In this screencast, I'm going to show you how to create just a real simple subroutine in Visual Basic for Applications. What we're trying to do here is to make a sub. When we run it, there'll be an input box that will ask you for a number. We can put in a number such as 5, and then the VBA sub will calculate the square of it, and then it'll export it back in a message box. So this is what we're going to be creating in this screencast. Before I open up the Visual Basic Editor, before I even start writing in anything, I like to draw a flow diagram. All flow diagrams start with start. Usually this has a circle around it. We are then going to be asking the user for some input. Whenever we have input, we make that as a parallelogram. So x is going to be the number that we are going to square. And then and we're going to do the calculation where we square it. So we're going to create a new variable y that's equal to x squared. Whenever we are performing an operation, we make this as just a rectangle. And then the final step is to display y. And finally, we want to close our flow chart with end. And this is usually a circle or kind of a square with rounded corners. So we're done with our flowchart, and this we can use to guide us into how we're going to create this code. So we're going to ask the user for the x, we're going to do a calculation in VBA, y equals x squared, and then we're going to display y, which is x squared, to the user. So I'm back over here in Excel. If we want to create a VBA sub, we can go over to the editor. We can either get that from the developer tab, I can click Visual Basic, so that will do it, or, and as you notice, when I hover over the Visual Basic, it tells me that Alt F11 will open that, so I usually just do Alt F11, brings up the Visual Basic editor, and now what I'm going to do is insert a new module. We can either do that Insert Module, or we can go over here to Insert Module from that drop-down, so we're inserting a module. I strongly encourage you to write option explicit on top. If that's not written there, you can always type it in. In order to make it so it's always got option explicit on all of your modules, you can go up here to tools, options, and just make sure that require variable declaration is selected. It won't put it up there immediately. You have to actually close Excel and then reopen it. You start all subs with sub. So that's a subroutine in contrast to a function. I'm going to name this square input. And we have an open and closed parentheses. In parentheses are arguments or inputs to our sub. We don't have any arguments. Most subs don't have arguments, but most functions do have arguments. And if you recall from the flowchart, the first thing we're going to do is ask the user for an x. Before we even do that, we have to declare our variables. So I've dimmed x. Dim is short for dimensionalize, and it basically means we're declaring and letting VBA know that we have x and y. And doubles are the most common. These are just some um, real numbers, so these can take on decimal places. They're stored to about 15 or 16 significant figures in VBA. So I've declared x and y x then is going to be equal to we are going to ask the user using an input box uh, please enter a number and I'm putting a space after the colon just for formatting it makes things look a little more pleasing so it's going to take whatever they put into this input box and store it as the local variable in VBA x now we want to do a calculation and y is then going to be equal to x squared recall that in my flowchart the I'm doing this step now where y is equal to x squared. And finally, the final step of our flowchart is to display y. I'm going to do that in a message box. So I'm going to just do message box. The square of your number is, and I'm putting a space there. If you want to concatenate things, you can put an and and y. So it's going to say the square of your number is, we have a space, and then it's going to add y at the end of that string. So we should be all set. Well, let me show you a couple ways to run this. We can either run it here, so I can press play there. 
I can go into Excel here and do Alt F8. That brings up all the macros. And I'm just going to run it from here. So I run that. It asks for a number. I put in 5, click OK, and it says the square of your number is 25. Now what if I had a number in an active cell and I wanted to square that and maybe place it in the adjacent column? Well, that's pretty easy to do. We'll just make a few modifications to our original sub. I am going to, instead of picking up X as in an input box, that's just going to be the active cell value. So whatever I've selected as my active cell, right now that's B2, that's going to be stored as the local variable X. So when I run this, that'll pick up 4, and then I do the same thing where I'm just squaring that, and then I'll, I don't want to do a message box. You could if you wanted to, but what I want to do is display the square, which is Y, in one column over to the right. So I'm going to say active cell dot offset. If I want to put something in a column over, a row down, or three rows down, or ten columns over, you can use this offset. And I'm going to offset zero rows and one column over. So that will bring it instead of B where it is now, it'll bring it into C. And then I'm going to say the value is equal to Y. So now everything is set. I make sure that that B2 is my active cell. I'm going to show you how to run it using F8 so we can step through this. I have my locals window open down here. Press F8. Now when I press F8 there, it picked up 4 as the active cell value. So I have 4 here. This is a good way to see what's going on and to troubleshoot if it doesn't work. Now when I press F8, it should square X to create Y, which is 16. And then I pressed F8, and then what it did was it put that value Y in an offset to the active cell. And now I press F8 to end the sub, and we are done. So that's a just a simple way to create a VBA sub.